Okay. Perfect. We are going. All right, sweet. Well, let's get started. Um, thank you all, everyone, again for being here. My name is Grayson Knoll. Um, <laughs> like Grant, I'm senior product designer here, and I have been here quite a while. I've been here actually about six years, and uh, you know, this is a feature that I've been wanting to build for what feels like maybe all of those years. Um, certainly, since we built Cot, um, which was I guess a couple years ago, um, we built Cot and we we um, built this application installer, um, and from the start, this was functionality that we knew we wanted to build into it. Um, and, you know, there's, it's it's such a robust um, feature uh, or, or COTS is such a robust feature that, you know, we've had so much to do, but uh, I'm really, really excited to be able to share with you today, like kind of an alpha version of, of branding your installer um, and kind of introduce this functionality into the product. So let's get started. Um, Real quick, what we'll cover today, um, we're going to look at uh, the application custom resource uh, and, and the application spec, um, a new branding key that exists in there. We'll look at how you add custom CSS to that, um, as well as custom fonts. Um, the actual demo that we're going to do um, is not going to include custom fonts, um, mostly because um, we're running into a couple of, of issues um, with some things on that that didn't quite make this alpha release. So we're working hard on getting this in, but we will talk about how to add it into the spec so you can see that. Um, and yeah, like, like I said, we'll get into a demo. Um, again, just as a reminder, um, everything that, that we're seeing today is, is an alpha. And so there's things that may change um, before this gets to GA and even um, when it gets into beta. So um, let's look quickly at what we have today is as the application installer. Um, this is what your end customers see, how they consume your applications. Um, and to date, you know, this has pretty much just had one look and feel, um, which is that it's been designed by Replicated, uh, right? There's no ability to customize this, um, the fonts, the color schemes, um, everything is just kind of very generic and generalized. Um, and now we don't have to have, you know, it doesn't have to be that way anymore. Um, Right now, you know, you can add a uh, application icon here. That's about as far as customization gets today. So now we'll be able to to brand this um, with your your brand colors and fonts. Get this looking a lot more um, in line with your brand guidelines, um, and we'll we'll uh, we'll see how to do that here in a second. Um, let's jump in. <clears throat> So I mentioned we're going to look at the application and uh, in, in the application custom resource. We have the, the application spec. This is where you know, you'll include some metadata about your application. Um, today, right, we have the icon field, which is where you can supply um, a link to an icon. Or if you're installing via AirGap, you can uh, include a base64 um, string, data string of, of your application icon. And you can see here we have this new uh, this new field here for branding. Um, and then under that, we have a key of CSS. Uh, and CSS here um, is just, you can put in a string. So, you know, in this case, we have a single value. So I could actually just write a string of, you know, body, background colors, uh, you know, whatever. But you know, realistically, and like you'll see in the demo, you can have a lot of uh, CSS being being put into here. Um, so you can have it be a multi-line um, string to make this easier. Um, and, I will say um, it's important to note this feature for application custom branding uh, for the app installer is restricted to the enterprise plan. Um, so if you're currently not on an enterprise plan, uh, definitely contact your you know account representative here at, Rep, uh, at Replicated so we can get you upgraded to this uh, so you can start testing it out and using it. Um, and uh, where did my friend go? Okay, here we go. Um, great. So let's also look at um, adding fonts um, because it's very simple. It's just another key inside the branding um, under this, this branding field here. Um, you can define multiple font families. Uh, for example, you might have a header font that you use and then for your body copy um, and other you know, messaging across your, your brand, you might have a, you know, you use a different type of font. So um, right here, we're defining our first font family. Um, for Shield security here, we have our custom font of Shield Serif. Um, and you can see up here now in my CSS, I've added um, this font family key here. These two fields will match. Um, so when you define your font family, the name you 
the name that you give it here will match, need to match what you define in your custom CSS. Um, and then we provide sources. Uh, you, you'll, you'll provide the source files for those fonts. So these will actually be, and I'll pop over here to um, vendor portal really quick, just to give a, uh, uh, a better example of this. So you can see we have, um, you know, just at the root, um, you can drag in your, your font files. So those would just live underneath here. Um, so that's, that's kind of what the team is, is focused on working on at the moment. Um, all major font uh, families are supported on here. So right now you can see we're using uh, WAF files, but you can use PTF, OTF, EOTs, uh, WAF2, and actually even SVG files. So if you have a font file that's you know, an all custom SVGs, those will also be supported. Um, I will also say, um, you know, we're, we're working really hard on making this a lot simpler as we move it into beta and GA. And one of the ways we're making this simpler um, is by allowing the CSS to also be defined this way to where you just have like a CSS source um, that would point to a source file in your application resource, um, just like we do here. So you could have, you know, you could host your, your CSS anywhere you want, and then you just drag that file in or include that file in your release and just point to it in your, your application spec. And uh, it will pull that in uh, and apply it. Um, and that's it really with the spec. It's not very, you know, it's it's pretty simple. It's pretty easy to get up and running. Um, so let's just look at a demo and, and um, do some branding in real time here. Um, so I'm gonna pop over here to uh, my admin console here. I have uh, my Replitato app, which, uh, you know, is used by the Farmers Association of America to do potato things, I guess. Um, but you can see here, this is just very generic looking, right? We have these blues and the blue links and everything, but me as the creator of Replitato, I've got a brand that I wanna put on here. I've got you know, these nice kind of golden brown colors and my potatoes that I maybe wanna use. I've got some reds and greens that are really nice. And so let's try and get this thing branded to look more like my company. So I'm gonna create a new release over here in the vendor portal. I'm gonna pop into my application YAML here. You can see we already have our lovely icon in there. Um, I'm gonna come in here underneath this. I'm going to add branding. That's okay. Now I've written some CSS that I'm gonna come and grab and paste in here and I'll kind of go over it. Um, as we, we paste it in, I'm gonna drop this in here and let me just, um, tab this here. Uh -oh. Oh. The tabbing was all messed up. There we go. Great. So what I've dropped in is just some pretty basic color overriding classes. You can see I'm targeting some, some text colors here. Um, I have um, some different link colors that I'm targeting here. Um, I'll also note that one other way that we're really working hard to make this simpler is by um, you know, really reducing the number of classes required to, to make a global change in the admin console. You can see here I'm having to target a few different ones, you know, three, four, five classes of, of different links to make sure that all of them are covered throughout the admin console. We're, we're working really hard and that's, that's a big focus right now is to really simplify down these classes to make it very quick and, and easy to, you know, take this, you know, what did I just paste in 2030 line maybe of CSS and bring that down to maybe about, you know, 10 and really, reduce the amount of CSS that is required to, to globally brand that at uh, admin console. Um, great, so got some error colors, some success colors and everything. Let's go ahead and save this. Yeah, oh wait, what is complaining about here? Mm. Let's see, I think this should be okay actually. Let's check for an update. Now, while this is pulling in, what you'll see is as soon as it pulls this in, um, you can see I've already gotten some changes um, applied even as it's just pulled this version and I've not even deployed it yet. Um, that is something that is just part of this alpha. Um, beta and GA versions of this 
um, will not apply that branding until you've actually deployed your version. So, um, you know, we don't want to have um, somebody who maybe has an automatic uh, check for update set up and they, they fetch a new version and all of a sudden their console looks totally different. They've never, never deployed it. Um, and so we don't want that to happen. So it will not happen um, in GA uh, until you actually deploy it. But for now in this alpha, as we pull in these versions, it, um, it is changing. So right away, you can see all, all of our link colors have been changed here, not to this kind of um, you know reddish pink color. But overall, I'm still, you know, have a lot of this blue and I've got a lot of, um, you know, all these blue buttons and everything. So I'm going to pop back over and we're going to take this a little bit, uh, a little bit further, one step further here. Uh, and I'm going to come grab a few more classes over here. Let me grab these. I'm going to bring these in over here. Let's give it a couple clicks here. Great. So you can see here, we're gonna bring in some button override classes. Uh, we're gonna target our primary buttons, and secondary buttons, and uh, there's a few different types of secondary buttons, like red ones and some darker ones. I'm gonna go ahead and save this and we'll kind of see uh, what, what changes this makes across the console. I'm doing this very iteratively, um, which you know is likely how you'll be kind of in your dev process, getting your CSS all set up. Um, you know, in reality, once you get it all set up in your dev environment, you'll make one release to your to your customers that includes this custom CSS. So they're not going to be going through checking version four or five times just to get the branding um, branding updated. So here we are. We're looking a little bit better, right? We've got our green buttons here. It's a nice green color. But uh, you can see here we still have like a lot of blue going on. We have like blue loaders, um, all this blue up here, even these active states, all these are blue. So we're like, we're getting there, but it's not really quite looking like the Replicato brand quite yet. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, even some of these things like this green tag here, you know, I probably would want to match that to, to some of the greens that I'm using in my my brand. So um, real quick, we'll, we'll pop around and see a couple of other pages. Yeah, you know, all the things we're seeing here. Um, so we're going to come back. We're going to make one more release here. Whoops, not that. And I'm going to now override some of these elements. Before I do, I'm going to find out. I'm going to inspect this. I'm going to look and see here. So it looks like these are using this class of, of dashboard card. Um, so I want to make sure that I am using dashboard card somewhere here in my CSS to override these values. And this is probably going to be if you really want to start, you know, diving deep into um, into the the branding. You know, that's probably going to be your workflows. Maybe maybe inspecting elements and, and looking through and, and finding ways to uh, finding those elements that that need to be changed. Um, I'll I'll talk about it here in a moment. But there will be some documented classes, um, and then which which are things that you could you know be assured won't change from from version to version of COPS. But things that aren't documented, things that you maybe dig in deeper, inspect elements and, and find the class names. You want to definitely be testing those in between class versions to make sure that you know um, something that there's not a breaking change in those classes. Again, I like I said, I'll mention that more here in a moment. Um, so let's keep going here with our demo. You can see here we have um, some input classes. Here's our dashboard card class that we just we saw. Um, there's a few other things that um, I'm also wanting to change. Um, that is the, that uh, sort of lighter blue background color. So I'm going to target all those here. Um, <clears throat> some loader, my loader, some progress bars. Uh, you can see here some status tags. Uh, so I'm, I'm really trying to go through here some active states for our nav bars. I'm really trying to go through and find everywhere that you know might have some of these blue elements and and uh, take those over. Really get them on brand for red potato. We'll go ahead and save this. And we'll move this over to our channel here. Let's pull this in. We should see some pretty substantial update with this one. Yeah, there we go. Now this is looking a lot better. This is a lot looking a lot more like what I want red potato to look like. Um, you know, I, I'm getting the same kind of nice red color that I'm getting on my links as my active states. See my status here has been changed. Um, a lot more in line with this 
uh, button. If I zoom in here, you can even kind of see our loader is now been updated to that same green. And I can click around too and, and check out other pages. Right? I can go look at my version history page. See, it's also been, you know, all those changes have taken effect here. And check out my config, all my, um, oh wait, I didn't target my config items. Oh no, um, that's all right. We could always make a, we won't do another release, but we could always go make another uh, another release and do that. But um, yeah, I can come around and I can see some registry settings. You see here, there's still a little bit of this blue. So I could then, you know, I could, well not go back, but I could go in and I could, um, you know, inspect that and find that in target that class as well. Um, but even, even as I click over to my GitOps configuration, um, I'm seeing the, the, this nice yellow and my inputs when they're selected now have this uh, nice red border on them now. So um, even one thing I did want to check and see, make sure our progress bar got updated. So if I analyze this, yeah, there we go. So <clears throat> same our green motor and then that, that nice red on the progress bar here. So um, this is looking great. You know, you could obviously go deeper. You can start if you really want to like change the background, you could get into all that kind of stuff. But, you know, in, in, I guess, a decent amount of CSS, right? We wrote maybe a couple of hundred lines here. Um, again, we're working really hard to like pare this down and really um, make the classes that are required to, to make some of those more global changes uh, a lot fewer. So, you know, ideally this can maybe be even closer to like, I don't know, 100 or 150 instead of 200. So um, really excited about this feature though. Um, you know, like I said, it is, it is kind of in the alpha state, but um, it's looking great. And, and I, I'm, I'm really excited that we are we're finally adding this functionality to the product. Um, let me pop back over here, talk about a couple of things to getting started for you all. Um, as I mentioned before, this is uh, limited to the enterprise plan. So do be sure that um, if you're not already on that plan, um, consider it, reach out to, you know, your account representative here at Replicated. Um, we'd love to have you on here. Um, using this feature. Um, all the CSS that I put in today can be made available to you um, if, if you would like. If you want to get started testing this now and, and you know have sort of a starting point, absolutely can make this available to you. Please do keep in mind that um, everything that we were targeting today is subject to change. This is alpha. And so you know until this feature is GA, we have supported classes documented. Everything is um, uh, potentially breakable in the sense of, uh, you know, Classes could change at any time. Um, and so you'd want to make sure you're, you're testing new COTS versions. Um, the, alpha, the alpha documentation, however, is available today. This is publicly shared. You can go check this out. Um, I can uh, actually pop a link in the chat for you here if you'd like. Um, if you want to check out the, uh, the alpha documentation. Um, whoops. And uh, and then the documentation for all the supported classes will be available um, when we when we GA this on our, our doc site, doc.repeated.com. Um, I did mention the supported classes um, a little bit earlier, again, just to uh, reiterate, like a documented class would be something that will not change from COTS version to COTS version. So you, if you're targeting, I don't want to give an example necessarily because I don't know if it will be one, but let's say a button class as one that we document. Um, you can be assured that that button class will not change between COTS versions. So if you're targeting that, making it a color of your brand, you won't need to test that in between versions. However, if you start inspecting elements, targeting things that aren't on these documented, on this documented list, you definitely wanna uh, test that in between COTS versions just to make sure that nothing changed, that your CSS is still functioning as intended. Uh, and then, Lastly, um, you know, your feedback is, is super important to us. It's crucial to our product, making it better. Um, obviously you can see there's, this is alpha, there's some rough edges around this and um, smoothing them out is, and making that simpler is, is the key focus of, our, of the application installer team right now that's working on this. Um, and so we absolutely want your feedback. We, uh, there's, there's a couple of good ways to provide feedback. One is the replicated beta program, which I would, absolutely recommend like a thousand percent recommend that you join this because in addition to having kind of a direct line of feedback, you can be notified when we have new features coming out like uh, custom branding and even notified when it goes into GA. Um, so if you are not already a part of this, you can email uh, this address down here at the bottom, beta plus managers at replicate.com. When you do that, um, if you're doing that specifically about this feature, I would love 
if you could just mention that, that you want to join, you want to be notified about application custom branding, um, just so that we know, uh, you know, what you're interested in. We know that we can kind of be reaching out, having a conversation going with you for feedback specifically about this feature. Um, and then the other way that you can share feedback is through Slack. Um, if you have a shared Slack channel with us, um, you can at me directly or at um, whoever you've been working with, um, customer success engineer that you've been working with, uh, and they can get that feedback passed along. Um, and that's about it for my demo. Um, so if we have time here for questions, um, if anyone has any questions, thought, um, anything, anything like that. Uh, this is a uh, Jason Tyler. No, I'm just a quick question. I, you may have mentioned it. I may have just missed it. But it, did you say this branding is a feature that needs any to needs to be enabled on the replicated side if we're already an enterprise customer, or it's already in the latest COTS admin version? If you are um, already a enterprise customer, I believe this will be something that needs to be enabled on the replicated side. So um, if it's something that you're wanting to use, uh, let us know, and we can get that turned on for you. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep. So typically for features that aren't GA yet, we put those behind feature flags and that's why mm -hmm. we'll need to enable it for you. But um, once the feature is GA, it would be automatically available to enterprise users. Yes, that's good clarification. Thank you, Amber. Awesome. Any other questions or Thoughts or initial feedback, even just from what you saw today. Uh, Jason, you know, I think it looks good. Uh, definitely bookmark the, the Google documentation. We'd love to see, um, like you said, the kind of some sample CSS as a reference or starting point. I think that'd be super helpful. But um, no, this is something we've had within our organization, people are already kind of asking about, so it'll be mm -hmm. good to take back to them. Excellent. Yeah, um, like I said, we can we can make this CSS available. So if you wanted to start testing it and, and you know you already have enterprise plan and can turn that feature on, if you want to start testing, we can do that. Um, the, the documented classes that'll uh, be on our doc site, as well as once we document those classes, um, I think the, the plan is to also have a, um, like a starter template, starter CSS template available on there as well. Um, and so those will be made available hopefully in the coming weeks. I don't know quite the timeline on it, but I know it's, um, you know, it's it's definitely a coming soon thing. So, um, but yeah, if you, if like I said, if you want the CSS that we had today, reach out, we can get it, we can get it sent over to you for sure. Yep, we'll do, thank you. And uh, yeah, sorry, I don't know uh, what Replotato does exactly. Um, I wish, maybe we'll have to just come up with um, some some app that uses it so everybody can can uh, get on Replotato. I think it has a lot of potential. So maybe one of these days. You've already got brand excitement. Now you just need functionality. Ah, exactly. It's all there. It really just needs the, the inner workings built out. Great. Um, any, we looks like we have about a minute and a half minute left. So um, any other closing thoughts, questions? Maybe um, something we could cover is how would a, a vendor ask to get this enabled? Is it through the vendor portal, through a support request or, or how would our, our, our vendors ask to turn this feature on? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, Amber, I saw you were, nodding, I think, I, I don't know if you had a sure, yeah. preferred, a preferred way. So I think certainly if you want to um, join the beta program, you know, doing that and at the same time mentioning that you'd like this feature turned on, that's a great way to, you know, accomplish two tasks at once. Um, but in general, for any of our features that are behind feature flags that you're interested in trying out, um, you can go to the vendor portal under the support tab uh, and essentially submit like a, a request to have that feature turned on for your account. 
And generally what, what that will do is that will actually like open an issue and then we'll be able to follow up on you and assuming, you know, that that is, you know, something that we can turn on for your account, uh, the product manager uh, will connect with you and let you know they've turned it on and connect you with any, uh, you know, sample documentation or in the case of like alpha, sometimes those aren't officially in our docs yet. Um, so we'll provide you like Google Docs to understand how to use it or point you to the beta documentation that is on our doc site. Maybe a, a quick follow up there. So we're a newer enterprise uh, customer, but I guess, is there any place visibility wise where we could see kind of what a list of all those beta feature flags are, or is it just work with you via an email to see what might be available that we might not know about yet? Yeah, that would work too. Um, if you want to just, you know, even sign up for the beta program and, and say on that, you know, request that you'd like an overview of all the features available, that's definitely something that we can follow up with you on. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, it's about to close. So thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.